The earliest legend of feral children goes as far back as 771 BC to the historical figures Romulus and Remus. Now who are they? Okay, so ancient Rome has a few founding stories. One of them is that Romulus and Remus were twin brothers who established the city of Rome. They were abandoned at birth and raised by a she-wolf and fed by a woodpecker. Since then, stories of children being raised by animals such as wolves, dogs, apes, monkeys, and bears, who are commonly known as feral children, have appeared in several stories and tales. Obviously, for example, we know Mowgli from the Jungle Book as well as Tarzan, but in real life, now, there are plenty of stories that suggest that this is in fact possible for an animal to actually nurture a human. Let's take a closer look into the story of the feral children Amala and Kamala from Calcutta in the early 1900s. Welcome guys to another episode of FTD News in History. My name is Leroy Kenton and this is where we talk about some of the craziest and most bizarre and shocking stories that happened in the past. Now before I continue, I want to know guys, um, I was thinking about this before I started to film, if you had to choose, what animal would you want to be raised by? It's kind of a weird question. I don't know, I think I'd probably want to be raised by cheetahs. Those are like my favorite land animals. So yeah, as I was saying about this story about um, Amala and Kamala, it's probably one of the most popular feral children stories. Both of them were from Kolkata in West Bengal, and a reverend by the name of Joseph Amrito Lal Singh claimed to have rescued the girls from a wolf den in the year 1920. And the wolves are actually coincidentally known to take children. As a matter of fact, in the 1990s, several children in rural India had been snatched away in their sleep by wolves. Later on though, the children were found nearby with their throats pierced, stomach rips open, and limbs chewed on. So yeah, if a wolf takes you, it can go either one of two ways. Apparently. Now when Reverend Singh found these two girls, what he was observing was a mother wolf that was leaving the den, and the wolf was followed by her cubs and two of them looked very human-like. So the human cubs turned out to be these two girls were eventually rescued. Now the assumption is that the girls weren't actually sisters because it's common belief that they were taken by the wolves at different times. Kamala was eight years old at the time and Amala was eight months old. The girls had severe learning disabilities and they were completely ignorant of human language. And you know, they could actually mimic wolf sounds. They would make like these howling sounds and do that wolf whistle sound. Now, as far as them developing human language, when Reverend Singh was trying to teach Kamala how to speak human languages, she only learned about 20 words. However, he wasn't able to get any further with Amala because she sadly died a year later after being rescued. Now, Kamala, the older girl, she lived up until 1929, but that's when she died of typhoid fever. Now, this is what Reverend Singh had to say about these girls. They would not allow themselves to be dressed, scratched and bit people, who tried to feed them, rejected cooked food, and walked on all fours. Both girls had developed thick calluses on their palms and knees from having walked on all fours. The girls were mostly nocturnal, had an aversion to sunshine, and could see very well in the dark. They also exhibited an acute sense of smell and had enhanced ability to hear. The girls enjoyed the taste of raw meat and would eat out of bowls on the ground. They seemed to be insensitive to cold and heat and appeared to show no human emotions of any kind apart from fear. At night, they would howl like wolves, calling out to their family. That's crazy, like it's hard enough to raise a child that has never been around animals at all. And again, when I hear stories like this, I always try to think like, what is going through a person's mind if they're thinking like an animal, but they're really a human being? But anyways, their story got a ton of media attention. But you see, the reverend's side of the story is the only side of the story that we know. So of course, as you can imagine, a lot of people doubted that this was even authentic. They say, you know, the girls must have been autistic or something, you know? Maybe there is something there, because you see now, Mr. Singh said that he found the girls back in 1920. However, the first time he ever published anything about the girls was in 1926. Also, at first, he said that the girls were given to him by a man in a nearby village. But later he said that he himself rescued the girls from the wolves. One of the 
biggest skeptics was a French surgeon named Sergei Eroles. In 2007, he published Enigma of the Wolf Children, and in it, he mentions a few things. First, he said that the original diary that Mr. Singh is said to have kept during the time he was documenting the girls is 100% false because it was written years after Kamala's death. And the original manuscript is actually kept in the manuscripts division of the US Library of Congress in Washington, DC. Also on top of that, the picture is showing the two girls walking on all fours, eating raw meat, as well as others. He said that they were actually taken in 1937, which was after the deaths of both of them. Okay, now let's take a look at it a bit more of a recent case. Misha de Fonseca, who is a Belgian woman, claimed that she was escaping from the Nazis during World War II, and she was protected by wolves after that. Also, in 1991, remember the story of Oksana Malaya? If you guys have been keeping up with FTD News, I actually did a news and history of her, the girl that was raised by dogs. So I'll link to that at the end of this video. That was a crazy one too. So guys, do you actually believe that an animal can raise a human being? Let me know your thoughts down there as well. And that concludes this episode of FTD News in History. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Be sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed these videos and stay around, you know, check out some of the other videos and I'll see you guys real soon. Until next time, I'm Leroy Kenton. Boom. I'm out. All right, so here's a video of Oksana, the girl that was raised by dogs. You can check her out. I go into a lot more detail about her story. And also, here's another one where several people have actually grown horns from their bodies. Yeah, that one's going to kind of make your body itch a little. So I warn you, approach with caution. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in another video.